Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday live stream. So today, what I want to talk about real quick is just a simple down and dirty explanation of what Bitcoin is. And the reason why I'm talking about this today is because I'm going to the Rare Evo event in Las Vegas uh, starting on Thursday. And I'm going to be talking to, uh, I still have family there. I still have some old friends there. And inevitably, I'm going to be asked about Bitcoin. And I want to make this a little bit snappy. Now, as you know, on this channel, I've talked about how I don't tell people about crypto and digital assets. I'm not here to be an evangelist because if you don't have time for it, I don't have the time either. So the only thing I would really recommend, if you can call it that, is if you care enough about family and friends that are close to you, then maybe you might want to talk to them about that. Now, as far as like acquaintances, I don't really care. I If they don't get it by now, I don't really have time. But for the people that I really want to make, make sense of it, yes, I will talk to you. So today, what we're talking about is <laughs> Bitcoin and the explanation thereof. And when I was taking a look at this, this actually jogged my memory because there was a video this morning and it was the former PayPal CEO. And this is from Neil Jacobs, he's got a great, great account. But uh, when, when he's talking about this, the former CEO of PayPal, he makes it really about the dollar amount and, and the and just how much it has appreciated or depreciated. I want people to get away from that. I want them just to stop talking about the number go up theory. I mean, it's great because that's what really got us all into it, but I want you to take a listen to this. It's about a minute and a half, and it's a the fuller version is about six and a half minutes or so, and you can, you can listen to it. I, I have already tweeted this out on my X account, but just take a listen to what he's talking about, and let's just talk about what I think is the simplest way to explain Bitcoin, which is the DIP, which stands for uh, debt, inflation, and purchasing power. Debt, inflation, purchasing power. Debt, inflation, purchasing power will make sense in a second. Listen to this. Bitcoin, quote unquote, the greatest scam in history, adding that it's a pump and dump scheme like anything the world has ever seen. You might remember he appeared on our show to discuss that. Now he's back with an even bolder call saying Bitcoin is headed straight to zero. Let's bring in Bill Harris, the former PayPal CEO. Bill, welcome. Good Thank to see you. you in person. Thanks. You know, I'm, I'm delighted that you like buying into weakness because I think you'll have a lot of opportunity to do that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. yowza. Now, first of all, that was a pretty good joke. I, I have to give it up to him. That made me laugh. But uh, as a reminder, though, this is this is six years ago when he made this uh, this this claim, this talk. And Bitcoin was six thousand eighty seven dollars. And again, it's very easy just to say, ah, you don't know what you're talking about because, the, you know, number went up. Again, let's try to get away from that. Another minute or so. Listen to this. Well, there you go. We'll see. The market will tell us. So what's different this time in terms of your call? Before you were skeptical, you said it was a scam. Now you're saying it's, it's, it is going to go to zero. Well, first, at first, I don't make calls. I'm not in that business. And, sure. you know, I, I don't think I said it's going to zero. I said it's a whole lot. It's going to go eventually a whole lot closer to zero than a lot because there's just no value there. I mean, you can sum it up this way. Um, the cult of Bitcoin make many claims that it's instant, free, scalable, efficient, uh, secure, globally accepted, and useful. It is none of those things. And this is coming from the former payments, I right? Listen, pay, PayPal works great, right? I mean, the Russian hackers were able to buy all kinds of ads on Google <laughs> with PayPal this year, so it works very well. And I agree with you, all your criticisms, 100% correct. But to me, as the investor, I say those are catalysts for the future. As those things improve, I mean, we're not going to stay at seven transactions per second. We're going to be able to scale this. We have to. Otherwise, it is going to go to zero, like you said. But I guess. So that's why I want to kind of get away from some of this like number go ups type of scheme and just start talking about the basics of the basics, which, again, would be the dip. Now, what he talks about there, he said that, you know, people claim that it's 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 free and it's it's useful. I don't know about has anybody ever said it's free. But I think we kind of get away from the whole point of that. So again, what I'm going to be sharing with friends and family as I go to Las Vegas for that Rare Evo event is what I call the debt. And to explain Bitcoin, debt, inflation, purchasing power, debt, inflation, purchasing power, debt, inflation, purchasing power. All you got to do is when you're talking to people about Bitcoin, just go, look, we have monstrous debt. There's this thing called the U.S. debt clock. And if you just do a, a simple search, for debt clock, this is the first one that that'll come up. And I want you to notice something. You have to remind people like, look, the debt right now is $35 trillion. Did you know that you can hit this button called time machine and go back for a numerous amount of years to see what the US national debt is? 
When you take a look at the debt, it'll make a lot of sense for Bitcoin. There is no debt there. The inflation is so low. It is a store of value. So check this out. This is today. U.S. national debt is 35 trillion. America, number one. This is in 2020. U.S. national debt is 28 trillion. 2016, it is 20 trillion. 2012, 16 trillion. 20, 2008, eh, under 12 trillion. 2004, about 7 trillion. 2000, 5 trillion. 2000, or 1990, 3 trillion. In 1980, 984 billion, just under $1 trillion. Why we talk about this is because it's very simple. The US and debt around the world does not decrease as time goes on. I know when people see this, they're like, ah, well, we can, you know, not people who are in the know and actually deal with this and, and know about Bitcoin, but the people who just take a look and go, eh, 35 trillion, it, it'll eventually go down. No, it's going to keep going up. And it's been going up for 30 plus years. So if you think we're not going to get out of debt, I think you have another thing coming. So just introduce them to the debt clock. So that is that part. And inflation. So with inflation, all you got to do is send them to the M2 money supply and just say, look, we keep printing money. And if you take a look at the debt from, what was that, 1980? See how much money gets printed? The inflationary rate of funds of the US dollar keeps going up. And that's why we have so much debt on our sheets. So if they just understand like, look, if you have a massive amount of money being dumped in the market and yes, we can see that it was a massive amount. It went from 15 trillion to 21 trillion because of the, of the uh, coronavirus. But to get that out of the system is going to take a lot of effort. And not just doing what the, what the Fed does is going to be very uh, effective. Actually, don't even get into that. Just tell them the M2 money supply or the money supply that we keep printing corresponds to the amount of debt. And what does that mean for us if we have inflation? And the purchasing power goes down. All you got to remind them is this. Do you feel like your dollar has gone further in the last five years, in the last 10 years, in the last 20 years, or has it decreased? Nobody's gonna tell you that the prices have decreased. Just remind them, if you keep paying for things in dollars, those prices will keep going up. If you denominate things in Bitcoin, prices will keep going down if you have a long enough time horizon, say like four years or so. And if, and if you are into real estate, just show them this. This is how much it is for the average house in 2016 was 288,000, just say under 300K. And it cost almost 700 Bitcoin. Today, the average house price is over 400,000 and it costs you under seven Bitcoin. And that's all you gotta say. So just remind them, the debt is huge. It will not go down. The inflation keeps happening because we keep printing money. And the purchasing power keeps going down. And the reason why we like Bitcoin is because it is finite. It's not scarce. It's a me medium of, of, of exchange. And it is valuable over a long enough time horizon. And then lastly, if you're like my brother who loves, who loves Trump, just remind him of this. Trump wants the US government to have a national stockpile of Bitcoin. So if you're trying to make the argument for people, just say, hey, your presidential candidate wants that. Now, if they don't like Trump, don't mention this part. But the rest of the stuff remains the same. And if you want to really bring it home and just say, look, I, I know you're into you know, whatever investments they, they might be, just send them to Ben's website and say, look, I want you to go to this site, use the DCA simulation, it's free. You got to use a, a, an email and just start plugging in numbers. If you put Bitcoin at $100 starting this year, you wouldn't be up that much. But over time, let's say 2023, if we did it, you'd be up almost double. And if you want to really bring it home and talk about like a four year type of store of value, let's go to 2020, or excuse me, 2021, 2020, excuse me, you'd be up 3x. So to make it simple, just do that, talking about Bitcoin, debt, inflation, purchasing power. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, all this time sensitive, da da da. da.